Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Today I am Cik Gudila and we will learn something new today. So what is it? So the topic is interactions between living things. So we are living things and animals, plants, also are living things. We interact with each other and animal and plants also interact with each other. So this is a topic for science year six. So interactions between animals. So interactions between animals are divided into two which is intraspecies interactions and interspecies interaction. Intraspecies interactions is interactions between the same species. Same species like, for example, the cow with a cow, a penguin with a penguin, an elephant with an elephant. So they are the same species. But interspecies is interactions between different species. For example, like this one, a cow and a goat. So, for example, we have another uh, like a lion and tiger. So, they eat the same things, they live at the same place, so they interact with each other. So, that we call as interspecies interactions. Interactions between different species. Okay. Next. Interaction take place in form of cooperations and competitions two ways. So, but the difference is cooperations, the interactions can benefit both parties. So, both can get benefit. But the, for competitions, competitions, the interactions only benefit one party only. Okay, so that's the difference between cooperations and competitions. Next. Animals living in a group. Okay, animals, there are two types of animals. First, animals that living in a group. And the second, animals that live in solitary. So, animals live in the groups. Is the animals that live in the group, they live together their entire life. For example, we have the bees, monkeys, and lions. Okay, you can name another type of animals that live in the group. Okay, you can name it in the comment section. Next, we have the animals that live in a group, but now we look at the advantages and disadvantages. So, the advantages for animals that live in a group is they can cooperate to get something. What is it? Their basic needs. For example, they can protect themselves from enemies because... Bersatu teguh bercerai roboh. Once we are strong, uh, when we become one, we are stronger. Next, they can find food together. And they can find shelter and build nests together. Okay, this one is the disadvantage of animals that are living in the group. This is because they need to compete with each other when they are limited. Of, okay, for example, food. Water, breeding meat, and living space. There are also one thing. In addition, disease spread easily among animals that live in a group. Okay. Next, we move to the animals that living in solitary. That means these animals live alone. For example... And for addition, most solitary animals are predator. Predator. Okay. So, example, we have panda, tiger, and eagle. You can name other type of animals that live in a solitary. Write it in the comment sections. Okay. Next, we look at the advantages and disadvantage of animals that live in solitary. For example, advantages. So, the advantage for animals that living in a solitary is they're able to avoid competitions for water, for food, for to find the territories and breeding meat. They, they don't have to compete for this because they live alone. And besides, they're able to move silently without attracting attention from enemies or predator. predator. Okay, because they are alone. They're walking alone. So that's why. And 
the disadvantage. Disadvantage for animals living in a solitary that take longer time to hunt food because they don't have a friends, they don't have a team. So that take longer time to hunt food. Hard to defend itself when attacked by predator. So this one because they are alone when they attack, being attacked by enemies, it's hard for them to defend themselves. So that's why they need to walk uh, silently. Ah, because they are predator. Predator. <laughs> okay, next. It's hard for them to find a breeding mate during mating seasons because there's no other animals, the same species of them around them. So it's hard for them to find breeding mate. For those who live in a group, okay, they already saw their mate, but they need to compete to get their mate. But for solitary, they need to find their mate. Okay, next, we move to the type of interactions between animals. There are three types of interactions between animals and we call it as symbiosis. So symbiosis can be divided into three, which is the first one is mutualism, commensalism, and the third one is parasitism. Okay, can you see it? There, yeah, that's it, parasitism. So what is this? Okay, symbiosis in interactions is interactions between two animals of different species that live together. They are different species, but they are living together. So that is symbiosis. We look at the first one, which is mutualism. Mutualism is an interaction between two animals of different species that benefit both animals. Both animals get benefit. So, for example, like this one, we can see that is a buffalo and a bird. But what is the bird doing there? The bird is eating ticks on the buffalo's skin. The bird get food while the buffalo get to reduce the number of ticks on its skin so that buffalo won't feel itchy. Next, we also have this one. We have a crocodile and also a bird. So what is the bird doing in the mouth of crocodile? Ah. So actually, what the birds do, it's the birds eating the meat from between the crocodile teeth. The food stuck on the mouth of the crocodile can cause infection. So that bird is actually helping the crocodile. So the crocodile won't get a toothache. Tak sakit gigi. Okay, the bird get the food as benefit while the crocodile get a clean teeth. Yes, that's what they are doing. The third one is, okay, I hope you can see it. It's actually a sea animal get free transport Transport, okay? And leftover food from a hermit crab. That is a hermit crab. At the top of the hermit crab, there is a sea animal. So, what sea animal do is, sea animal have a, a poisonous tentacles. So, that can protect the hermit crab. But at the same time, the sea animal get a free transport. Ah, they don't have to walk. They just get a free transport from the hermit crab. Okay, next. That is mutualism. We move to the second one, which is commensalism. So commensalism is the interactions that give benefits to one species, but to the other species, neither benefit nor harm. So nothing happened to the other species. The first species get benefit. The other species don't get anything. Not even harm. Okay? So we have the first one, which is the commensal. That one get a benefit. But the other one, we call it as hosts. That hosts are not affected at all. Not even get any benefit, not even get harm. Okay, so for example, like this one. Okay, that one is a remora fish. The small one is the remora fish. So we call it as the common cell. It attached itself to the body of shark. Okay, the shark is the host. This is for them to get food. Protections and free transport. You see that? That remora fish are get benefit from the shark. But the shark don't get anything. The shark don't even get bothered by the remora fish. Okay, next. We have another example, which is this one is a barnacles. So, barnacles is the common soul. The barnacles attach to the skin of a whale. So, the whale is the host to obtain food while gaining free ride from the whales. 
the whales is neither harm or benefited. So nothing happened to the whales. Okay, same goes to the shark. Nothing happened to them. Okay, next. We go to the last one, which is a parasitism. Parasitism is an interaction that benefit one animals only. Okay, and the other one get harm. So that is parasite. Okay, parasite, the first animals we call as a parasite get benefit. Okay, and the other animals, which is the host, get harm. For example, like this one, we have a flea and lice. Okay, flea and lice both are parasite. It can live on mammal skin, which is the host. To obtain food by sucking the host blood. And for example, the second one, that one is a tapeworm. Tapeworm is also a parasite. So tapeworm obtain fruit, food from the living intestines of humans or animals. Okay, so this tapeworm can live in our body. So make sure, take care of yourself, take care of your hygiene. So eat safe food or cook food okay so that is a parasite i think that's it and if you want to do an exercise you can scan this qr code and then you can see the notes and also exercise so i think that's it for our lessons today i hope you enjoy remember to like and subscribe my videos for more okay bye thank you for listening